Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what you need to include in your eLearning or instructional design portfolio and how to structure it. So stay tuned. So in one of my previous videos, I shared how to select the right website tool to build your portfolio. But once you've decided on a tool you want to use to actually create your portfolio, whether it's something as simple as Google Sites or something more complex like WordPress or even Webflow, the next thing you need to do is to determine what you want to include in it and how to structure it. Now, I'll tell you from experience, when I created my very first online portfolio, I thought the purpose was to include as many examples of my work as possible. I thought the best approach was to go for quantity. And so I had examples of all sorts of random things, e-learning examples, infographic examples, presentation examples, workbook examples, and all sorts of random stuff. And you wanna know what happened as a result of all of that randomness? Well, two things. First, people who visited my portfolio couldn't really tell what it was that I specialized in. Was I an e-learning designer? Was I a graphic designer? Was I a general instructional designer? The truth is nobody could really tell because my portfolio was full of a bunch of random things. Now, here's the second thing that happened. Because my portfolio was full of a bunch of random things, some prospective employers and clients started contacting me for work that, if I was being really honest with myself, I wasn't really interested in taking on. So what I learned from that, and what you should know, is that it's always quality over quantity. As a hiring manager, I'd rather see one or two really great examples in your portfolio rather than a bunch of mediocre ones. And so when you're thinking about what types of work samples you want to include in your portfolio, you wanna focus on three things. What is it that you're really good at? What is it that you really enjoy doing? And what is it that you wanna be hired for? Now, if you can answer those three simple questions, then you can tailor your portfolio in a way that not only showcases what you're good at, but then you'll hopefully increase your chances of getting hired for something that you actually enjoy doing. So for example, my talent is in creating visually engaging e-learning and video content. I enjoy working on projects that allow me to use my creativity and I wanna be hired to do just that. And so if you were to go look at my portfolio, that's exactly what it represents. So when you're trying to figure out what to put in your portfolio, you really need to think about where those three things intersect and create or curate examples that showcase those things. Now, while we're on this topic, let's talk about how to actually structure a portfolio sample. Remember, the purpose of a portfolio is to showcase your skills. And so when designing the page for one of your portfolio examples, you wanna provide all of the information necessary for a prospective employer or client to consume that information in a clean, efficient, and consistent way. And to do this, I usually follow a consistent structure that includes three main elements. First, a project description. This is your opportunity to describe what the project was about, your involvement, the problem you helped solve, and ultimately the results of the project. Now, how much how much detail you include is totally up to you. Some project descriptions are like, like really thorough case studies with a lot of detail provided. And this is beneficial if you want to showcase a lot of the upfront instructional design work that went into the creation of the actual deliverable, such as the needs analysis, your design documents, and even your storyboards. Now, in other cases, some project descriptions are only a paragraph or two long with a greater focus on the actual course you're showcasing rather than the process that went into creating it. Really, it, it all depends on what you're trying to highlight in your portfolio. Now, the second element you want to include are project details. For example, who was the client? When did the project take place? What tools and skills did you use during the project? 
Listing these details not only helps potential employers and clients better understand what you bring to the table, but these are also really great keywords that can help boost your search engine optimization with search engines like Google. Now, beyond all of that, the third and final thing you want to include are images or other multimedia to showcase the final deliverable. Now, whether it's screenshots, a video, or a link to the actual live course, you want to let folks see the actual finished piece of work. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of the three elements you need to include, let me show you what this all looks like by showing you my own portfolio. Now, here we are on my portfolio page of my website. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see that I've organized my examples into two groups. One group to showcase my custom e-learning development work, and a second group to showcase my video and animation work. Again, this represents not only the type of work that I enjoy doing, but it's also what I'm good at, and it's what I want people to hire me to do. Now, if we scroll back up here and click to view one of these portfolio examples, you'll see here that I have a short description of the project, followed by those details I mentioned earlier, and several screenshots that can be clicked on to view a larger image. Now, for my portfolio, I decided not to include a ton of details about the background of the project or my instructional design process. Again, the goal here is for me to put forward examples of my e-learning development and visual design work, so it's more focused on those areas. Now, as for the actual course, rather than linking to a working version, I decided to showcase each sample with a short highlight video. So let's take a look at this one here so you can see what I mean. All right, so that's what my portfolio looks like, and those are my tips for what you need to include in your e-learning or instructional design portfolio and how to structure it. Again, if there's one thing I want you to take away, it's to curate or create work samples that showcases what you're good at, what you enjoy doing, and what you want to be hired for. If you can do those three things, you'll be on the right track. All right, so this leads me to my question of the day, which is what other tips can you share for what to include or how to structure an e-learning or instructional design portfolio? Share your tips by commenting below. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that subscribe button below. And if you want to learn more about building your e-learning portfolio or growing your e-learning career, check out the e-learning designers academy at elearningacademy.io. My name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.